still have a few seconds. Sir, it's uh, IT consulting and data analytics. Okay. So, you know, the first part, the IT consulting, actually we are not into IT, uh, but yes, we are into data analytics. Uh, we call it decision analytics, you know, because the analytics that we do <coughs> basically is to support the management to take decisions. Uh, yes, it's based on, you know, analyzing data, uh, but primarily the purpose itself is to help management take better decisions, inform decisions. And so basically, you know, EXL, that's one part of the business that we have. Uh, we also have certain products, what we call platforms. Uh, so these platforms are meant for industries. You know? So industries run their operations on these platforms. So these are so when we say platforms, uh, these are, uh, you can say, software applications. You know, for example, an insurance company, you know, won't need a platform to manage its entire policies. So how do you enroll policies? How do you administer policies? You know, so there is an entire set of applications that help those companies manage those policies. So. You know, one is uh, contributing to the organization as an individual, right? The second is uh, working along with a team, contributing to the organization. Now, people who have worked, uh, you know, with their teams, can you tell me, you know, what are the basic differences between the two? You know, working as an individual and working or rather leading a team. smokers uh, <clears throat> would have kind of enjoyed IPC cigarettes. Yeah. Uh, so the good part of being in the cigarette industry is uh, whether you have a depression or whether you have oppression, you know, the industry continues to grow. Yeah. Um, alcohol and cigarettes, uh, whatever may be, you know, your economy state, you continue to do well. Uh, Thereafter, I realized that my life will be like a properly district directorate, you know, being in a company where everything is taken care. So I ventured into a new world and uh, last uh, two, I would say 15 years I've been in the companies which are more uh, technology and telecom side and uh, definitely been a roller coaster in that sense. Uh, <clears throat> spent about uh, five, six years in the IT industry. I joined them in, uh, in the year 2000, so I think, I don't know if you all are aware, but this $100 billion industry was founded on a myth called Y2K. So, uh, we all threatened the world that the whole world will collapse if you don't change your zeros. Yeah, so everybody came running to us and we created an industry. Uh, and that became a $100 billion industry. <coughs> so that's uh, that's where I spent about a couple of years. Uh, then thereafter I went into telecom and uh, <coughs> uh, worked with uh, Motorola and Airtel and Spice Group uh, in the telecom space. Uh, and basically worked across the entire uh, chain of offerings, uh, infrastructure, uh, in terms of uh, Airtel, in terms of being an operator and then into devices and retail. <coughs> so, uh, the good part was, uh, you know, I kind of seemed to have caught on the industry when it is going up and got off the industry when it is going down. Yeah. Uh, that's been a good side in terms of my career, but uh, in terms of my personal investments, I've been the worst. Yeah. In the sense, I always invested the high and sold it the low. Yeah. So. Uh, my family members always make joke of me. You know, if at all, if you are investing in a company or a real estate, tell us because we'll withdraw it from there. You know. so, <laughs> I have such a poor reputation of personal investments. So, <coughs> so that's about uh, my background and my experience. And if you still feel interested, I'll move forward. Yeah. <coughs> uh, so basically, I thought I'll talk about some imperatives that are there in the industry. I think it's important for you all to know what the challenges are. And I think uh, the second part of it is 
there would be obviously each one of us need to have our own impetus to move forward and uh, just talk about a few of that. Yeah? So my question is primarily, uh, you spoke about a lot about change. So since you've been working in the field of HR for the past 20, 25 years, uh, how do you keep abreast with the different, so in, even in the field of HR, changes must be coming after every five years, policies must be changing, the old uh, methodologies must be becoming obsolete. So how do you keep abreast with these changes and still uh, con continue to have that competitive advantage? So, yeah. <coughs> Uh, many ways, I think, uh, you know, uh, you need to, first of all, be cognizant of the fact that uh, what you know, as I kept saying in the earlier slide, what you know is good up to a point. Right? When the world changes, then the competency says that you are very strong at. And as I said, uh, if you overplay strengths, they become weaknesses. Right? First is to understand that there are areas where things need to be changed. Right? and, uh, and uh, keep venturing into those areas which you don't know, uh, figure out your own ways of unlearning, yeah. uh, reflect on things, read books, you will get to understand a lot, yeah. uh, have your own coaches and mentors if you can, yeah. uh, in fact uh, uh, there is one program that I run called Reading from Within, Shale, Shale attended that program and they keep saying some, you know, we have some colleagues who suffer me every day in the office. Yeah. So, <clears throat> And um, I think uh, one of the concepts in that is about uh, having your own personal board of directors. Like companies have board of directors, uh, would you want to constitute your own personal board of directors? So I have mine, I have five board of directors. So I keep meeting them once in a way, talk to them about it, yeah, and how life is and how things are working or not working. And uh, get guided by what they have wisdom to share. Right? And, uh, the other one is I spend a lot of time with the people like of your age to understand what you think. Yeah. Uh, while, as I said, uh, you know, my life is. You kind of uh, you, you see a competition changing even when there is no need to. And then that kind of sets a benchmark for the entire industry to change. So as a company, you cannot sit back and say, "No, these are certain things I do not want to change." When there, then you are an outlier. So how do you react to that? When everybody else is changing senselessly. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question.